Ship interiors for many are a dream feature for Elite Dangerous, but for a few, they are unimportant. For me though, they are something I have long wanted to see. I believe they hold immense value to a game like Elite. I feel that they would fundamentally add to the game world, increasing its complexity, replayability and enjoyability. So here's a look at why I believe that to be true. Now personally, in my opinion, to be very clear here, the undertaking is complex, but in my opinion it would have been a worthy endeavour. Remember, these are just my personal perspectives. I'm a gamer dreaming up ideas that I would love to be able to play through. I'm not a developer creating a design document. While we won't ever really know what Frontier could have done with ship interiors, let's explore some of the exciting possibilities. Wreckage of spaceships could provide vast, explorable environments. Picture yourself boarding a derelict anaconda with the eerie silence punctuated only by the creaking of the cooling hull. Not just salvageable parts here, but piecing together an environmental story with audio logs, scattered personal effects, signs of metal, or perhaps an alien infestation, a Thargoid one likely at that. To expand on this, the salvage operations could have been procedurally generated with the layout hazards and rewards randomized to promote replayability. In some cases, perhaps a time element could be added in, as the ship slowly breaks apart or as it descends into a gravity well. This could certainly add tension and urgency. Additionally, there's the smaller ships to think about. If you're out there in your Federal Corvette or your Anaconda, perhaps you could scoop up a Sidewinder or an Eagle and then go down into the cargo bay and see a scene somewhat like this and then pick through the wreck. Now, ship interiors could serve as a launching point for extravehicular activities. You could venture outside your ship for repairs, anomaly investigations, or even zero-g combat. The transition from interior to exterior would add immersion as you navigate your ship to access necessary equipment, airlocks, or turrets. Missions could be expanded to include tasks so like rescuing the stranded pilots, investigating alien structures, or repairing equipment like probes or communication satellites. The important thing to remember here in all cases, both for EVA missions as well as everything else, is to avoid grind-based gameplay as well as mini-games and the like. We want full in-world missions here. Now, in line with this, boarding enemy or derelict ships could become a thrilling tactical experience. This offers a change of pace from the usual space combat, requiring different strategies and equipment. It also opens up opportunities for more story-driven encounters, with each boarded ship potentially offering a unique narrative. Different ships could have varied interior layouts and security systems, requiring varied approaches. Stealth could also be an option, or you could resort to brute force. A lot of options here, perhaps spalling off from some of what we've seen in Odyssey, but of course with improved first-person combat. Now, when you talk about ship interiors, a type of gameplay some people often refer to is the idea of ship maintenance. Now, my problem with that is the idea can be lead very quickly to mundane activities. It could become grind-based or even lead to a mini-game, something which I feel is best avoided. So instead of routine maintenance, how about dealing with sudden emergencies like system-wide power failure, a hull breach, or an alien or thargoid creature loose on your ship? This could create tense, memorable moments. Dealing with these situations could involve navigating your ship under adverse conditions. Emergencies could be made interactive, for example, the seal in a hull breach might require physically moving a metal plate and welding it into place. Lots of options here. Now, how about those NPCs? Already we do have crew members that we can take on board our ships. We can't really directly interact with them. And how about we take this beyond simple crew management? So the ship's interior could be the setting for more complex story-driven interactions with your crew, involving moral dilemmas, disputes, personal storylines and more. These interactions could influence crew morale and performance. Choices could affect your crew's loyalty and morale, influencing their performance in combat, their willingness to follow orders or even their potential to betray you. Lots of options here again. The idea really of making the spaceship your home, both for you as well as your crew, and opening up the load of other interactions. 
Now, borrowing a little bit here from other games like GTA, how about smuggling? This could become a more involved gameplay mechanic. Rather than just getting your ship past the uh, security patrols and into the station, you might have to find and utilize hidden compartments in your ship or perhaps even build them. This means you would have to avoid patrols or even manually unload your illicit cargo while docked. Law enforcement could board your ship, conduct a search, forcing you to hide your illicit cargo and act innocent. Alternatively, transporting volatile or dangerous cargo could turn your ship's interior into a ticking time bomb. And this takes us straight back to the idea of ship emergencies again and even, well, EVA and perhaps salvaging. We're getting some game loops here where one game loop potentially ties into another. So yeah, I really like the idea of smuggling and stealth because not only does it open up some options for improving smuggling, but also potentially ties into some of the other uh, gaming loops. Now, time further into other gaming loops, we've got scientific research and discovery. Your ship could be a base for in-depth scientific research, and this could also apply to your um, your carrier as well, your fleet carrier. And this means that you'll be able to carry out research such as studying Thargoid artifacts or even ancient alien artifacts because there were other alien races in the history of elite lore. Uh, decoding ancient languages or analyzing celestial phenomena, a lot of options here again. This would involve more than just clicking a button or a mini game. You could perhaps piece together clues, forming hypotheses and making the groundbreaking discoveries. The mechanics for that would of course require a pretty good game designer to say the least, but I don't think it would be impossible. Now this element could be taken a little bit further if you really wanted to get down to a brass tacks. How about a citizen science element? This could work similar to how it works in EVE Online, where players in-game conduct activities which contribute to real-world scientific activities. This seems like a perfect thing for Elite Dangerous due to its well, reliance on real-world science in the terms of the build-up and its construct of the galaxy itself. Now, I'm going to cite two single-player examples here, The Witcher and Mass Effect, but there's no reason that this couldn't be applied to a live service game as well. Tactical planning and briefings then. Important missions could begin with a briefing in your ship's conference room or cockpit. This would involve reviewing the mission objectives, discussing strategies and assigning tasks to the crew members. Or perhaps more realistically, you could use some interface panels aboard your ship, which would allow you to make decisions that influence the mission's outcome. These would include things like planning phases that could include um, enabling you to visually plan your approach to a mission, assigning waypoints, designating targets, and arranging extraction points. Now, I briefly touched on maintenance and upgrade earlier, but this could extend slightly further into other areas, again, hopefully with avoiding a grind-based gameplay like we're seeing in The Engineers. So maintaining and upgrading your ship could be engaging if implemented correctly. Instead of simply purchasing upgrades from a menu, you could find or earn schematics, gather materials and manually install the upgrades. Again, this would need a fine balance between being enjoyable and being too grind-based. This would make the process feel very rewarding when you start building up your ship because you'd have very much a personal attachment to your ship as you personally would have installed those upgrades and you'd even know exactly where they're installed and installed rather aboard your ship and this could also extend into a customization the ability to customize the layout of your ship perhaps could lead to a deeper connection with your vessel but this one i feel is likely a little bit too much of a dream out there as it's likely that the ship interior would have to be pretty much standard to fit the exterior model of the ship so like I said, these concepts aim to utilize the ship's interior as a setting for well, highly driven gameplay, immersive gameplay. Rather than focusing on mundane tasks or mechanics, the goal is to create memorable experiences that really do enrich your time in the world, as well as the lore of the game itself. Because you actually feel that these gameplay elements are, and whether or not you feel they fit into the current version of Elite Dangerous as it stands today, is certainly a very much open to debate. Some people will likely feel that these fit in perfectly, whilst other people will quite reasonably feel that they just don't have any place 
within the game world of Elite Dangerous, at least as far as the current gameplay mechanics go. Either way, do let me know your thoughts and feelings about all of this in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.